I, mean, I can just tell you that in Congress right now, there is no pro-Saudi element that's going to stick with our relationship with Saudi Arabia as it's currently structured. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, they lured this man into this consulate, killed him, and then, you know, cut up his body and sent a team to go into that country to kill him in the first place. That's just an unacceptable thing. We should never accept that from anyone in the world. It undermines our credibility and our moral authority around the planet to go after regimes like Putin's or Maduro in Venezuela or others. In this account, he said, uh, basically because there's 110 billion, as he claims, uh, arms purchases on, on order from Saudi Arabia, that, you know, that's, that's essentially more important or has to be weighed here in the response. I, I would have phrased it very differently. The important thing is that when you sell arms to a country, so it's true what he said, that they can buy from China, Russia, or anybody else. When you sell arms to Saudi Arabia, it gives you leverage over them because they need replacement parts, they need the training. So it, it's the kind of, you know, you can't sanction a country by cutting them off of something if you never provided it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it is true that arms sales gives us leverage. But to me, it isn't about the money. I don't know if the president had just been briefed and that's kind of how he used it or expressed it. But the bottom line is, I mean, there, the money, there's no way, there's no, there's no enough money in the world for us to buy back our credibility on human rights um, if, uh, if we do not move forward and, and take swift action on this, if in fact, even when it's, it's proven to be true.